Amen. Amen. That was a word. God is real. My brother Elton, I didn't know what the Holy Spirit led you to do, but I'm glad that he used you. Amen. The devil is a liar, and God is real. And the reason, I don't know if you heard me shout while he was over there, I shouted because of the music. I also shouted because I had left my iPad in my car. And Texas heat ain't no joke. And my sermon's on my iPad. So I go get the iPad, and uh, it says, it's not working. So I was praying hard over there. I, I text Nicole, my boo, my honeydew, and we start praying. So praise God. Praise God. It's working. Amen. Let us stand for the reading of the word this morning, or this afternoon. Amen. Acts 17, 10 through 12. Acts 17, 10 through 12. As soon as it was night, the believers ha, sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. They went to church. Now the Berean Jews were more of, of, of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message, somebody say, received the message. Receive the message. With great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see what Paul said was true. As a result, Brother Melvin, as a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and men. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Father, we come here to worship you in song and in sermon, God. So, Father, have your way this morning. Father, I can't do this without you, Lord. Move Pastor Norwood out the way and show up and show out in a mighty way. And when it's said and done, men and women, boys and girls will say, what must I do to be saved? So, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Have your way, Holy Ghost. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Pastor Small, I don't know if this was around your time, but from 1956 to 1968, there was a show that ran on the CBS network. The show was called To Tell the Truth. It returned to the airwaves in 1969 and ran until 1978. The objective, Sister Braxton, of this show was for a panel of people to decide if a person was an actual person or an imposter. Individuals had to choose between three people. Eventually, the announcer would say, would the real person please stand up? Hey! Today, on the power of the Holy Ghost, God wants to know an answer. The world wants to know an answer. And here is the question, here is the divine statement, will the real Bereans please stand up? Will the real Bereans please stand up? You see, my brothers and sisters, God used Pastor Small a couple of weeks ago to give us a solid foundation on what Berean is. Berean, I'm not going to put you on the spot like he did, Elder Kelly. Berean, B, believers. Somebody say believers. E, enjoying. R, redemption. E, evangelizing. A, anyone, in, now. God used Pastor Small in such a supernatural way that I had to reflect on what Berean meant. And then last Sabbath, Elder Bill tore the house down and reminded us that it's time for a spiritual tune-up. Today, Brother Def, we need to go a little deeper. Somebody say a little deeper. Because we have a holy mandate Will the real Berean please stand up? You see, in order to get to that mandate, there are some questions that has to be answered. Number one, first question, what, who or what is Berean? What made the Bereans of the Bible so special? Why should we all become Bereans? Let's see what the Bible says this morning. And did you know, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't it interesting that Berean 
is nestled in the book of Acts. And we know the book of Acts is about the power of the Holy Ghost. So isn't it interesting this morning, a nugget I did not realize, Sister Norwood, that why is Berean, uh, uh, the New Testament, the Old Testament, Berean is found in the book of Acts. So let's look into it. That's a nugget. See, what's the significance? So we can conclude through deductive reasoning that Berean knew the Holy Ghost. And if Berean knew the Holy Ghost, then Berean was filled with the Holy Ghost. If Berean knew the Holy Ghost, was filled with the Holy Ghost, then all the Bereans had the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Here's what the Bible says, Acts 17, 10 through 12. As soon as we night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were, um, were a more noble character, somebody say character, than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness, like Brother Melvin Kemp did, and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and men, and Greek men. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people who will read themselves into this Adventist message. See, they're studying to show themselves approved. Let the church say amen. See, we find out, Sister Norris, that Berean was a person or a group of people known as the Bereans. And isn't it interesting, and i got to take a pastoral privilege to say this, I don't ever see, Elder Bill, I don't see a fondren in the Bible. I, I don't see a who in the Bible. I, I don't see a metropolitan in the Bible. But what I do see, a Berean in the See, we should be excited because Berean is in the Bible. Amen. And because Berean is a Bible, that means there's a special anointing over Berean. Um, I'm going to have to church all by myself today. You see, these Bereans, they love the word. They love God. These individuals did not debate the word. They lived the word, and they spread the word. The Bible says that these individuals, these Bereans was of noble character. And what does that mean, Dr. Ann? Welcome back. What does it mean to be of noble character? Come on, Deaconess Ellen G. White. In my character and personality, volume two, this is what Ellen G. White says. A noble character is formed by stern battles with self. Christ has given us no assurance that to attain perfection of character is an easy matter. A noble, all-around character is not inherited. I don't care if you are Bill or Norwood or Wyndham, your character got to be developed. Right. It does not come by accident. Ellen G. White goes on to say, a noble character is earned by an individual effort through the merits and grace of Christ. God gives the talents the powers of the mind, we form the character, mercy. God gives the talents, and what you choose to do with it will determine if you go to heaven or hell. God gives the talents, the powers of the mind, we form the character. It is formed by hard and stern battles with self. Conflict after conflict must be waged against hereditary tendencies. The Bible says, there's generational blessings and generational curses. Have, have y'all seen, have y'all seen kids going, have you gone to a, to a picnic, a family picnic, and you see Pookie Kid? And Pookie Kid is just, the, Pookie Kid is just like Grandpa, amen, somebody. And Grandpa never met Pookie Kid, but because of heredity, there's something in the DNA. And these tendencies, for many people are inherited. Generational curses. Oh, come on, somebody. We should have to criticize ourselves closely and allow not one unfavorable trait to remain uncorrected. The world says you got to check yourself before you, hey, I'm in the right place. And if we checked ourselves before we wrecked ourselves, we would be a better people. 
There's a song, there's a song the other day. I know you don't know this song. You never listen to this kind of music. There's a song that says, sweep around your own back door before you sweep around mine. And then somebody goes on to say, take, take six months to sweep around your door and take the other six months to leave my door alone. So we got to check ourselves. We got to check our characters if we really want to be a Berean. Point number one, what we just find out, a Berean. Our Bereans have noble character. Somebody say noble character. These Bereans have studied the scriptures, have examined the scriptures, the Bible is their mirror. You see, man-made mirror, Sister Erica, a man-made mirror will, mirror will lie to you. A man-made mirror will say, you all that in a bag of chips. A man-made mirror can't see what's in your heart. A man-made mirror will lie to you. But when you get to the Word of God, Amen. this Word will not lie. Amen. The Word again said that, that the heart is wicked above all things. The Word of God said that we are sinful that we are wicked. This is the mirror we should be looking in. And as Bereans, we need to be studying the word if we call ourselves Bereans. Bereans, number two, receive the truth of God's word. Notice what they're saying. A real Berean receive the truth of God's word, then examine the truth. Finally, they act on the truth. If we call ourselves Berean, because a Berean is not the building, Berean is a mindset. Somebody say mindset. You see, you don't have to be a member of Berean church to be a Berean, because Berean is a mindset that loves the word of God, that preaches the word of God, and lives the word of God. And the servant said, will the real Bereans please stand up? Berean, we learn in scripture, enjoy coming together on the Sabbath. See, they, see they, I don't know if they have veggie links, Elder Bill. I don't know. I don't know. I heard, Elder Bill, Elder Bill, I heard about the Bill Burger. We're going to have to talk after service. So let me put his business in the street. You see, when Elder Bill was in college, they made what is called a Bill Burger. I heard that Bill Burger was the best burger in town. So we're going to have to talk after service. Amen. We need that recipe. So they gathered together. Bereans love fellowshipping. And they love fellowshipping because they studied together. Someone say study together. So Bereans had noble character. There was no shadiness in them. They, they checked themselves. They, they received the truth of God's word. Then they enjoyed being with one another. So they understood. See, these Bereans understood the blessings of attending church on God's holy day. There is a blessing, Sister Ransom, to be at church on God's holy day. No matter what people may say, well, you can go to church any day. You can go to church any day. But the blessing is on the Sabbath. Why is the blessing on the Sabbath, Pastor Noah? Because the Bible says the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy. There's a double blessing Amen. on the Sabbath. Amen. The Bereans strengthen their faith by listening to God's word, Amen. by living God's word. So who is, who is a Berean? Who are Bereans? Why should we all want to become Bereans? Yes, we want you to join this church, Bereans, but God is saying today, change your mindset and be a Berean in your mind. Because once you change your mindset, once you transform your mind, then you can become a Berean. Berean. What does that mean, Pastor Noah, Berean? Pastor Smaller, I took your uh, acronym and I added to it. Is that okay? I didn't change that, I just added to it. Amen. Number one, B. B is for what? Oh, y'all be better. B is what? Believer. believer. A Berean is a believer who has been blessed and protected by God. Berean, a Berean individual knows that no weapon found against them will prosper. A Berean individual is not perfect and they will make mistakes, but Donovan Leclerc said it best. Saints fall down, but they get up again. A saint is just a sinner who falls down, but they get back up again. So a Berean B is for a believer who has been blessed and protected by God. 
E. What's E? Enjoying. E. Enjoying redemption. I believe a Berean enjoys redemption because they know their names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hey. You see, they don't come in just to play church. They don't come dressed up saying happy Sabbath. They live a life knowing that their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You see, it's not enough to have your name on a church roll. What's important is to have your name on God's heavenly roll. Can I just say this? Don't you want to be Berean too? Or redemption. Redemption. A Berean knows we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Our sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. We love redemption, and we want to tell the world, my brother, my sister, I know you once was this, but God can make you that. My brother, my sister, my story, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Don't let nobody tell you. Elton, we all make mistakes. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Don't let no one pull up your past. You tell them my address has changed. I no longer live on, live on sin highway. I live on heavenly highway. Amen, somebody. Because I've been washed in the blood. Amen. E. What's E? Evangelizing. And we evangelize, Berean, because our eyes are fixed on eternity. It's like this. It's like this, Elder Bill. If you saw a burning house and your family members was in it, would you say, well, I'm going to just pray about it? Oh, let me come down here because y'all think this is a game. If you saw your family in a burning house, would you say, well, I'm going to let somebody else do it. I'm going to let somebody else say, save them. Marshall, if you saw your car on fire yeah, and you saw family members in the car, would you say, oh, well, oh, well, oh, I got somebody. Well, what would you do? What would you do? Rip that car. Rip that car open. And why I'm saying that, Pastor Norwood, I'm saying it because there are burning houses out there. There are car, cars burning up out there. There are family members who are dying, who are burning up and going to a crashless grave waiting for us to evangelize. So we got B, believers. E, what's E? Enjoying redemption. R, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. E, evangelizing. A, anyone. And the reason we can evangelize anyone and everyone, because we are anointed by God. Ha! We are anointed in the Holy Ghost. And when you get the anointing, look in the New Testament. They were bold. They were not afraid. They went to everybody. Some say everybody. You see, the, pr the reason churches don't really grow, Pastor Small, is because we talk about the Holy Ghost, but do we have the Holy Ghost? And God is saying, I want to give you my Holy Spirit. So how do you get it, Pastor? No, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to take five, five extra minutes. You ask and receive the Holy Spirit. And once you receive the Holy Spirit, it's not for you just to sit on. It's for you to go out and witness. And watch this, and watch this, watch this. And when you receive the Holy Spirit in your life, actively get the Holy Ghost, you have miracles, signs, and wonders. Right. I was talking to a person, I'm not going to call their name, but the Holy Ghost showed me, Elder Sophie, this has shown me a long time ago that Christians are missing their blessings because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about, Pastor? Why are you saying that? Well, I'm blessed. Yeah, you're blessed, but we could be more blessed when we get received with the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about, Pastor Nord? When we get power, thank you, and power not just for the church. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, Elder William, you get power on the job, favor on the job, favor in your life. You don't have to worry about chasing after anybody. They will chase after you. See, and we as Christians are missing our power because we don't want to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do you think they is, Pastor Noah? I'm glad you asked. Because it means that we have to give some things up. We're going to have to let some people go. We're going to have to let some desires go. We have to crucify the flesh and get the anointing of God. And when you get that power, your life will never be the same. You have boldness to witness, boldness to stand on the word of God, even if you have to stand by yourself. Last but not least, in 
now. Why now, Pastor Norwood? Now. I can witness now. I can witness in the street. I can witness in my home. I can witness at school. I can witness wherever I go. Now because in, nothing between me and my Savior. Hey, there's nothing between me and Jesus. I've been born again. I've been washed. God turned me around, placed my feet on higher ground. And God is saying, this is who Berean is. Berean is just is more than an acronym. It's a lifestyle. It's a culture of holiness, righteousness, and favor. Don't you know when you truly become a Berean that God will open doors that no man can shut and shut those doors that no man can open? If you really want to be a Berean, it's not about a name on the building. It's about a lifestyle. It's about a culture. It's about living a righteous life before God. It's not going to be easy. You may lose some friends and some family members, but that's okay. Because the Bible says, greater in me than those who is in the world. I wish, I wish, I, I see Simon's dad, and I, he could tell some stories. Has it been easy? But it's been worth it. Pastor, pastor came back from a stroke. And look where he is right now. And he, and, come on, amen, somebody. My sister had a stroke. My, my, I have a sister in, in, uh, in Louisiana. She had a stroke, and she is walking again. So there are miracles, signs, and wonders that's waiting for the church, that's waiting for Christians to be a Berean. I'm a Berean. Do a Berean. Don't you want to be a Berean too? A believer who is protected by God, enjoying redemption because our names are written on the Lamb's Book of Life. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. E, evangelizing, because that's what we're called to do. A, anointed for such a time as this. In living with the notion and knowing that there's nothing between me and my Savior. Don't you want to be a Berean? What is this about this Berean? We should be excited about being a Berean. We should be excited about living this gospel message. We should be excited about being holy, being righteous. Mercy, help me, Holy Ghost. That wasn't even part of my sermon, so <laughs> let me get back to my sermon. You see, my brothers and sisters, all of God's children should be Bereans. We should be living a Berean, having a Berean mindset to be blessed, to be anointed. Today, the Holy Ghost is saying, if you want to be a Berean, all you got to do is just stand on your feet. With a real Berean, please stand up. Please live holy. Please live righteous. Please tell a dying world that God is coming soon. Please tell your friends. Please tell your family members that there is still salvation in the name of Jesus. It pays to be a Berean. It pays to be holy. It pays to be righteous. I don't know about you, but this day, I want to live holy. The Bible says, choose you this day who you will serve. Today, if we make our call and election sure, you can become a Berean. My brother and sister watching online, even if you're part of another church, you can be a Berean. God wants all of his children. If you're born again, you should be a Berean. You should be blessed. You should be anointed. You should be a child of God, living a holy and righteous life. I'm a Berean. You're a Berean. Don't you want to be a Berean too? God is calling you today. God is calling you today to be a Berean. What does it mean to be a Berean? I just said it. A believer. A believer. Excited. Redeemed. Evangelizing. Anyone now. But also add it to that, Elder Bill. A Berean is blessed and protected by God, is enjoying, enjoying redemption because their names are written in the book of life, is anointed because there's nothing between them and their Savior. Oh, I'm excited today. I'm excited. I'm tired but excited. This heat is hot in Houston. I'm a Berean. You can be Berean. And all it's going to take is standing on your feet and saying, God, I want to be a Berean too. I want to live holy. 
I want to live righteous. I want to evangelize. And isn't it interesting, Elder Billy, we say all the time, and I'm going to leave this and I'm finished, that there will be no starless crowns in heaven. So what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. It means this. Let me come down here. It means this, that if you're in heaven and you have a star in your crown, that means you evangelize. Huh. You take somebody with you. But it also means the flip side of that coin. If you did not do any evangelizing, if you did not tell somebody about Christ, if you didn't live holy, there's another place with your name on it. Amen, somebody. Don't get quiet on me now because we all call to evangelize. We all say there will be no starless crowns. And that suggests that if you did not evangelize, you would not be in heaven. Oh, y'all, don't get quiet on me now. Everybody can tell somebody about someone who can save everybody. That's what a Berean is. Berean. Don't you want to be a Berean? The Holy Ghost said, will the Bereans please stand up? Will the real Bereans please stand up? Will the real Bereans please stand up? If you want to be holy, if you want to be righteous, please stand on your feet and let God see that you want to be holy, that you want to be righteous. This is not appeal. This is asking you if you really want to be who God calls you to be. Is that you? Is that your appeal? Is that your desire? To just to be who God calls you to be, to be anointed to be have favor over your life. And as you stand, here's another appeal. Do you want to have a holy life, a righteous life? To have a life that's dedicated to God. I'm not asking you to join the church, not right now. But I am asking you to make a decision to live a life that is dedicated to God. That's it, to be a Berean. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for reminding us to be a Berean, to be blessed, to enjoy redemption, to be anointed, Lord, to evangelize, Lord, nothing between me and my Savior. So God, we thank you for all those who stood, Lord. Bless them, keep them, anoint them with the spirit of evangelism to grow your kingdom. So God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and these things we ask in your name, amen. You may be seen in the presence of the Lord. For those online, we do have a digital card. We have a digital card that you will be put up. What's your name? Elder Bill, can you hand me that, that card? That... Hallelujah. When the offer comes, we do have a way to give online. QR code is in your pews. Just take a picture of this QR code, scan it, and you can give online. Amen, amen, amen. And at the end of service, we're going to have a right hand fellowship. We're going to meet at the door with our new family member, Brother Kim. Amen. Often at this time.